UCSD is removing hundreds of eucalyptus trees in a student housing area. Some students are saying about it. Still basking in the sunshine this weekend, but inland temperatures are getting warmer and there's a heat alert for one area. And local farmers team up to pick fresh fruits and vegetables, then hand deliver a produce box to your door. I love you too. <laughs> I love you too, buddy guy. Plus, a search for an accused bike burglar who stuck around to play with the family dog. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. UCSG is taking down hundreds of eucalyptus trees in a student housing area, saying they can be dangerous if they fall. Good evening, I'm Jesse Pagan, in for Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Some students are now concerned about the loss of all that shade. CBS 8's Brian White is working for you tonight to find out what the university's plan is. Yeah, I was out here a year ago when students contacted us about the dangers of falling tree limbs. And now a year later, the school is actually removing all of the eucalyptus trees in the area here. But without any plans to replant more trees to take their place, some students are not happy about it. Crews hard at work cutting and dismantling these giant eucalyptus trees in and around the Mesa student housing complex. So right here we have a few of the trees that have been cut down just last week. Around here, tree limbs are known to fall periodically, sometimes destroying cars. And just a month ago, one fell on an apartment. Luckily, no one was hurt. I heard how like a big branch fell on top of, a, of the apartment that was right behind, and I actually got to see what happened. I reached out to UCSD, and they told me they're removing 250 eucalyptus trees that were identified as having the most risk. I mean, I don't think it merits taking all of the trees out. It will make such a big difference uh, in our everyday lives not to have trees around. Anna Lopez is a sociology PhD student who's lived here three years. She thinks keeping some trees would be better than removing all of them. The trees have been fundamental to give us shade, just make this like a cooler, easier to live place. UCSD tells me the work started last week and should go for a couple months. If a tree's size and fall radius could hit a building, car, or playground, then it will be cut down. But students here want to see other trees planted in their place. Without the trees, it will be kind of living like in a desert. The university tells me they have plans to demolish and redevelop the entire central and south Mesa housing areas in the coming years, at which point new landscaping and trees will be added, but not before then. The time to plant trees is now, and they're going to wait till they redevelop, which to me is unacceptable, especially given that we're experiencing such harsh changes in weather and climate issues. At UCSD working for you, Brian White, CBS 8. Thank you, Brian. Things are getting back to normal in a Carlsbad neighborhood after a 16 hour police standoff with a man threatening to end his own life. It started around seven last night at an office building parking lot on Locker Avenue West. Carlsbad police and FBI negotiators responded. They say a man was sitting in a van holding a gun to his head. He mostly spoke Russian, so they called in a translator. A priest and a deacon also came to the scene to try and help. Around 1130 this morning, the unidentified man surrendered. Police say this is being treated as a mental health issue, not a criminal investigation. We'll still be basking in and baking in a little bit. The sunshine this weekend with inland temperatures getting warmer. Uh, that's right. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis here early with a sneak peek of what the weekend has in store. Carlene? I like your improv, Carlo. <laughs> he's, he, he's one for baking. It's I put basking. Be, it's going to be warm. It is going to be warm, but here's the thing. It's summer, yeah. so we are talking about temperatures that are going to be on the warm side, and we're even talking about being in the seasonal range, at least across most inland areas. There is one particular location that will have a heat alert. Taking a look at how we shaped up for today, you had those 70s right along the coast. You also had some 80s popping up, mainly across inland areas. We had 80s across the mountains, 88 degrees today for Escondido, 79 degrees for Miramar, 82 for La Mesa, 108 for Borrego Springs. So 76 degrees, that is the average high for this time of the year for coastal communities. That's the range we're going to be in. That will take us all the way into next week. Now temperatures could go up a little bit more, potentially even some low 80s. But as of tonight, 
This is what I'm going with. And so that's because a coastal eddy looks to develop. And so models are suggesting that that would move in and bringing in that cooler air in the morning hours. 90s across inland areas. Those are going to be going strong this weekend and then dropping off from that as we have those 80s returning by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. But as mentioned, there is one particular location that has an excessive heat warning now, and that area is going to be feeling the, mo the bulk of that. We'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast coming up. Jesse, Carlo. Thank you, Carleen. A $325 million Russian yacht seized by the U.S. government more than a year ago was seen cruising around San Diego Bay this week. The Amadea is docked in National City, and U.S. taxpayers are footing the bill to maintain it. As CBS 8's David Gobertson reports, the Department of Justice still has not filed a court case that would allow the super yacht to be sold at auction. A ferry boat employee recorded this video on Tuesday of the Russian superyacht Amadea cruising around San Diego Bay. The $325 million luxury vessel has been docked in National City for 13 months after it was seized by the U.S. government in Fiji because the boat was allegedly owned by a sanctioned Russian oligarch. It arrived in San Diego Bay in June of last year Fishermen on the dock at Pepper Park, near where the Amadea is docked, were startled Tuesday morning by the yacht's horn blowing. Them horn? They scared the hell out of me. Herbert Ramirez told me the yacht pulled out around 9 a.m. Tuesday. One tugboat took it out of here. Where'd they take it? I don't know. They just went that way. One tugboat. One tugboat. Tracking data from VesselFinder.com shows the Amadea cruised under the Coronado Bridge and anchored off downtown San Diego for several hours and then returned to National City. I recorded this video of the yacht coming back to dock around 3 p.m. Tuesday. The Department of Justice told me the yacht was moved for routine maintenance. According to court documents, the cost to taxpayers to maintain the vessel is about $1 million per month. There are insurance costs. There are the cost of maintaining a skeletal crew on board for safety reasons. They need to keep the engines running. Journalist Stephanie Baker with Bloomberg News has done extensive research on the Amadea. She says the United States hopes to auction off the yacht to help finance the government's fight against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But in order to do that, the DOJ will have to file a forfeiture case in federal court, which it still has not done. And they'll have to convince a judge that the super yacht is in fact owned by a sanctioned Russian oligarch. They will have to present a pretty substantial body of evidence to get it through the forfeiture process. And I imagine, and I'm just speculating here, that perhaps there's been some hiccup in that process and they're still needing to gather more evidence. The Amadea has been docked here for 13 months. That's roughly $13 million in maintenance costs. The U.S. government is going to want to be reimbursed for those costs if and when the yacht ever gets sold at auction. That's $13 million that will not be going to the Ukrainian war effort. In National City, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thank you, David. State, community, and Caltrans leaders are celebrating a much-needed facelift for Ramona's historic business district. Earlier today, leaders cut the ribbon for repaved Main Street intersections at 7th Street and 10th Street. Improvements include newly textured and stamped crosswalks and painted signposts. Signal posts, rather, you see them there, all throughout downtown Ramona. The $1.2 million project is part of Governor Gavin Newsom's Clean California Initiative. Like a lot of thieves, officers say this person used opportunity to steal a bike, except they got distracted by a friendly dog. CBS 8's Elizabeth Sanchez joins us live from the San Diego Police Department, where detectives get why people think this is all funny, but they still want to solve a crime, Elizabeth. Yep, they sure do. Detectives here want you to call them if you know anything about this case. They're calling this video entertaining. And you've heard of those dumb criminal stories. Well, this is a case where the criminal does something you wouldn't expect. Let's take a look. It's 1040 p.m. on a weekend, and this guy sees an open garage and starts to take a bicycle. But wait, 
a friendly golden retriever comes out, and the thief starts to put the bike back. Where's your dad? Where's your dad? She's not enough to leave your garage open. The garage has several bicycles, but the thief pets the happy dog, eventually calling for the homeowner to come out. Dad, where are you? Unique situation, uh, obviously a crime of opportunity. Very unusual, I haven't seen anything like that in my career. For a moment, you think the thief is going to just leave the $1,300 bike. I love you too. <laughs> I love you too, buddy guy. He, he seemed very friendly. Uh, especially with the dog, I, I wouldn't want to jump to conclusions and say he was under the influence of anything. But after playing with the dog for about a minute, the bike thief leaves. The dog starts to follow, but doesn't go with the thief. And now police need your help. His photos on social media, it's a white male, probably early 30s. In the video, he's wearing some pretty distinct orange athletic type shoes. And we can say for certain, he's a dog lover. Remember the coolest dog ever? <laughs> that is a cool dog. So a few more details about the bike. It is a 2019 model, has eight cap tire valves on the tire valves, and um, police say they are sure they're going to catch the suspect. It's just a matter of time. Elizabeth Sanchez, CBS 8. That dog, though. <laughs> did what, the golden did what a golden does. Exactly. And it was it was setting a trap. Yeah. It was trying to keep him there. Of course. That's, of that's course. what it was trying to do. Of course. It was a, a very good dog. Of course still ahead tonight. Are there really air marshals on all domestic flights? We verify that. Plus, it's a record scientists didn't really want to see what we're learning about the impact of global warming on our oceans. And up next, a ray of hope tonight when it comes to resolving one of the Hollywood strikes.